What is design thinking? Design thinking is a creative problem-solving practice that puts the end user's needs at the center of the solution. An approach popularized by David M. Kelly and Tim Brown of IDEO and Roger Martin of the Rotman School. Design thinking helps create new and innovative solutions by encouraging us to explore new perspectives and approaches. We can use this practice to create a wide variety of forward-thinking solutions, new software applications, new products, even new work processes. At Ameren, we're using design thinking to create solutions for both our customers and our coworkers. Design thinking is unique because it focuses first on people's needs instead of how the work gets done or what's currently available. It's a mindset shift for looking at problems using empathy and collaboration while ensuring that the solutions we develop are not only desirable, meaning they make the end user's life better, but that they're also feasible to produce and viable the solution makes good business sense. There are six basic steps or phases in design thinking. It's easiest to learn these in sequence, but in practice, you may find yourself jumping back and forth across phases. The first phase is empathize. It all starts with gathering information about the end user or customer. This means learning about what they want but don't have, the way they do things, their preferences, and their environment. Using customer data, interviews, and observations helps us learn what users are doing and why, and gives us a deeper understanding about their needs. This leads to the second phase, define. When trying to come up with new solutions, we have a tendency to want to jump in head first. In design thinking, we must clearly define the problem before solutions are even discussed. We also need to narrow down the target audience. It's not uncommon to think our solution will solve everyone's problem, but this is rarely the case. For example, Instead of focusing on a solution that will help all Ameren customers use our website, it would be more effective to narrow the focus to help new Ameren customers successfully start their service on the website. This more specifically defines the problem and narrows the target audience. From there, we can get even more specific. What classifies someone as a new customer? Are they residential or business customers? What unique needs does a new customer have? How do we define success? We might find we need more research to ensure we fully understand the customer's unique needs. After diagnosing the problem and determining the scale of users it'll affect, it's time to ideate or brainstorm. We're looking for a wide range of new ideas without being influenced by existing solutions. The goal here is to generate as many crazy, wild ideas as possible. Once we have a number of ideas, we can start to narrow them down by considering how to make each idea possible. Some ideas will be discarded, some may be combined, and totally new ideas may emerge. We may need to determine which ideas are most worthy of moving forward to testing. Design thinking is about experimenting with possibilities. During the test phase, the ideas are made into simple, low-cost prototypes to test possible outcomes. When creating prototypes, the focus is on content, not aesthetics, and to be tested by those who will actually be using the end product. If we're designing a dashboard for customer service representatives, we want actual customer service representatives to do the testing. Having multiple low-cost prototypes lets us test multiple ideas without investing much money up front. As we learn what works and what doesn't, the prototypes are modified and the quality increases until we have a final product that meets the actual needs of our target customer. Creating and testing prototypes saves time and money and avoids developing products that won't get used. The final phase is implementation. Now it's time to identify the activities, capabilities, and resources needed to bring the new product or service to life and ensure every finding and insight possible from end users are embedded into the final product. Design thinking isn't just about experimentation, it's also about continuous learning. It doesn't stop after implementation. Feedback from end users is collected after launch to make modifications and refinements. 
When we use design thinking principles, challenging problems become more manageable, leading to faster, more creative, and more effective solutions that are focused on our customers. Anyone can use design thinking to find new and innovative solutions to problems. Next time you're facing a tough challenge, consider using design thinking practices to help you uncover a solution.